And we're going to read <coughs> verses 1 through 12. Uh, 1 through 10, rather. Before I begin to, to tell you what this is, I'll, I'll read it. I want to explain to you that as you read these scriptures, these are your blessings today. Right now, in the 21st century, this is what it's talking about. If you read the blessings in here, apply them to your life. You are the righteous person that God speaks about in this psalm. So reading from Psalm 112, praise the Lord, hallelujah, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who fears, reverence, and worships the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. How many people have I got in here today that would put their hand up and say, that's me? Well, then you listen to what's in store for you. His spiritual offspring, Pastor Bob was talking about his natural grandson being born yesterday. This goes for spiritual and natural. Your children, if you are born again, you believe God for your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and those still to come when you're long gone. Amen? His spiritual offspring, and meaning all of us, be, will be mighty upon the earth. Now, if they're upon the earth, they're in human bodies, right? So his spiritual offspring is also talking about your natural offspring. And they will be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Okay. Say it again and mean it now. I am blessed. Amen. Prosperity and welfare are in his house. Now, when we say prosperity, everyone sees dollar bills or pound notes, whatever country you're in. But that, that's only part of it. Money cannot buy you the important things in life, beloved. And the quicker we realize that one, the better. Your wealth is your health, not your money. There's billionaires in this world that would give anything to have their health. And not one penny can buy it. Now, listen carefully here. Prosperity means everything. You know, prosperity in God's eyes is your, is your whole being. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. An encasement that takes you through this earth for the time that you've got to live in it. But when he says prosperity, you need to prosper in every area of your life. You need to prosper spirit. You need to prosper soul. You need to prosper body. And when the three of them are together, boy, are you cooking with gas. And that's the enemy's trap to stop you being whole. Yes. But God promised in his word to you and I, and I just read it to you, prosperity. In other words, you, you should be able to go to bed at night and sleep. You should have peace. You shouldn't be tormented. All kinds of things. I don't want to spend too much time in that one word, but I could preach for an hour on it. Prosperity. We've taken the prosperity message, and now not everyone... And I hope and pray that I have a balance here at Fair Havens. I believe God wants you to prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. That's what the scripture says. But it's not all about money. If, who cares if you're, if you're driving a Cadillac or you're living in a million dollar house? I could care less. I'm not into any of that. I've got much more important, bigger fish to fry than that. Are you hearing me today? If that's what you consider prosperity, then praise God, hallelujah. But all of the, what I just said can go like that. You can lose it like that. Then where's your faith? Amen. As I said earlier, we're in the vine. We're in the vine. We bring forth the fruit. He is the vine. If we're not in the vine at any given time, we could lose whatever we think is prosperity. But what, how do we feel about God at that moment? Do we get angry with him? Are we close to him? See, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done. Because he knows then that you're going to be, you're going to be mature enough to receive all of the blessings that he has for you. Listen now. Thank you, Jesus. Prosperity and welfare are in his house. In your house, welfare. He, he, he says he knows the plans he has for you. But we're talking today about your thought life. 
I forgot to say that at the beginning of the message. The title is, How's Your Thought Life? Everything begins in your mind. Everything begins there. The mind can be the most blessed thing or it can be the battleground of the enemy. And that, or the battle, your battleground used by the enemy, I should say. So when we see your prosperity and welfare, he knows the plans he has for you to do you good and not evil. In your expected end, what are we expecting? That's the key. What are we expecting? So in your house is going to be prosperity, welfare, and his righteousness endures forever. Your righteousness in God will endure forever. It's not by works lest any man should boast. It is in his word, and his word is sealed forever. Light arises in the darkness for the upright. Say with me, I am upright. Then get out of the darkness. I'm serious when I say this. And you do it every day with your mouth and your confession and your believing and your notifying your inner man. I am going to get through this darkness. You must leave me. But you must believe. I can't be there for you to do it for you. I can only teach you what to do. And believe me, I've proved this. I don't just stand up here and say empty words. I'm living it. I know what it is to have my face against the wall like Hezekiah. I know what it is to trust God alone. I know what it is. And to be able to believe. And I'm not saying you don't go for medical help or any of these things. I totally believe in this. I've been there myself. That's not even an issue with me. But at the end of the day, my great physician is the name of Jesus. Amen. He's my great physician. And he may use whatever hands he needs to use to bring me health and you health. and Whatever he needs to do. But at the end of the day, it's him that I'm trusting in. Are you hearing me? So light arises in the darkness for the what? For the upright, that's you and I. Gracious, compassionate, and just who are right in right standing with God. In other words, when you're born again and you're in right standing with God, you need to notify your thought life that you are upright, gracious, and compassionate, and just. Those are the attributes of God. And they're in you. You're compassionate. You're loving. You're kind. It is well with the man, verse 5, who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. I've seen it, beloved, over the years. I've watched it over and over and over. And when he says deals generously, deals generously can be anything to any person. A person could be, could be sitting in this congregation just now with a dollar bill in their pocket and gave it all to the Lord. That's dealing generously. Are you hearing me? I've had people put a button in the offering plate because they didn't have the heart to walk past it without anything. And they've called me that week with miraculous movement of God or move of God with their finances. A button. You see, God sees the heart. He sees the heart. So when he says here he will deal generously, that's what he's talking about. It's your heart attitude. Now, let's just say you have a million dollars and you give a hundred dollars. Big deal. That's not giving generously for a millionaire. Can you hear the point I'm trying to make? So it's the heart. It's the heart issue. And it's your thought life. It all comes together. It really does. So it's well with the man who conducts his affairs. Yes, in verse uh, 6, he will not be moved forever. Say this with me. I will will not be moved moved forever. forever. That means forever. Regardless of what happens, I will not be moved. I am uncompromisingly righteous and the upright and right standing with God shall be an everlasting remembrance. God is going to remember you forever. You'll never die. You may leave this planet, yes, but you will be remembered by God forever. 
that when you were on the face of this earth, you were the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You were born again. You helped the things of God. You, you, whatever you did, you did unto the Lord. And he says here that you are uncompromisingly righteous and you're in right standing and will be in everlasting remembrance. If I close this service right now, you should be blessed. Amen. For everlasting remembrance, from everlasting to everlasting to everlasting. We don't know how long that is. We can't fathom God. But we know it's a long, long time. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. That's part of your promise. Yes, evil things will happen. If you live long enough, you've heard me say it in the face of this earth, beloved, you will have some things to, to be afraid of. You, at least you, your fear will try to come to you. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is firmly fixed. I remember years ago doing a teaching on King David's life. And he had a fixed heart. He wasn't moved. He wasn't moved by what he saw. He wasn't moved by what he felt. He wasn't moved by circumstances around him. His heart was fixed on God. And that's why God called King David. That's one of the reasons a man after my own heart. So you will not be afraid of evil tidings. You'll be firmly fixed trusting. Now watch this. Trusting and leaning in, leaning on and being confident in the Lord. Now, here's another promise. Your heart, his heart, the righteous person, you and I, his heart is established. That was what David's heart was, established and steady. He will not be afraid while he waits to see. Oh, I love this. I love this scripture. Listen. While he waits to see his desire established upon his adversaries. He will not be afraid. You remember what I was teaching uh, last a couple of weeks ago and I was talking about seed time. There's seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. And it's in that time period that fear tries to come. And that's what he's saying here. He will not be afraid. He will not be afraid while he waits to see his desire established upon his adversaries. Now, remember in those days, they were talking about real live people with swords and ammunition and all the rest of it. I mean, they were in war times. That was their adversaries. And yes, we have adversaries in war times and these days with, you know, all of the terrible things that we see in this earth. You know, we have r real enemies. But how I see this is simply he's trying to tell us your adversary is anything that will come against the promises of God in your life. Your adversary is sickness. Your adversary is depression. Your adversary is fear. Your adversary is lack. Your adversary is, is, is just being miserable all the time. That's an adversary. That's a spirit. And when we know the word of God, when we can speak to our thoughts and say, no, 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 I am not going to be thinking this. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm not going to receive this. Yes, I know what you said. I'm not stupid. I know what you said. But I'm not receiving it. Are you hearing me today? And this is where all this comes in. He, he, he says, your desire will be established upon, it will take time, it may take time, it may be like this, but it will happen if you just trust him. And now look what else he says. He has distributed freely, that's you and I, we have given to the poor and needy. His righteous, upright and right standing with God endures forever. His horn shall be exalted in honor. What does that mean? That means that God has given you favor everywhere you go. It's up to you to speak it forth and believe God for it. It's up to you. See, so many people, they read the scripture, but they don't understand how to do this. He's talking about he wants his church to have honor upon this earth. He wants his church, the, the world to be jealous of his church. Because of the blessings of God upon it. The blessings of God should be overtaking each and every one of us. 
And again, when I say these kind of things, people think I'm talking about money. No, that's part of it. You can't pay your bills and have a comfortable life without it. And God does want you to have money. He just doesn't want money to have you. That's the difference. So what he's saying here is that he is the ones who have distributed freely, who pay our tithes, who give our offerings, who give to the mission field, and give to people that, you know, as my father would say, don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. You know, you do what we call the Pentecostal handshake and and give a, a blessing that nobody knows anything about. Those are the ones that really get blessed because God's seen you did it unto him. You see what I'm, I mean, I know we can't always hide these things, but there comes a time when God will say to you, I don't want you to tell nobody what you're doing. Let me bless you. Believe me, a thankful offering, a thank you offering, a prove me offering. Prove me now, wherewith, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, you won't have enough room to receive it. I got a a text the other day there from someone that's trusting God for a, a, a changing job and they've been offered certain um, positions and they text me and said pastor it is just like the windows of heaven have opened up and and they said I can't contain all these blessings and more and more are coming more and more offers are coming this is what God's people are supposed to be like beloved Now, I'm not saying you'll get there overnight, but if you hang in there and you believe God, do not despise the day of small beginnings. I was with Sister Sue this morning, and I was, you know, telling her about the announcement that I'm going to be making in a couple of weeks here, and and we just sat and talked for a wee while, because she was with me at the beginning of this ministry. She was with me over the little storefront. She was with me when I walked in there, and, you know, I'll never forget the stickers all over the place, "Vote, vote for Betty Hoffman. Well, it was vote for Jesus Christ after that, but that's okay. Despise not the day of small beginnings, you know, uh, Mary Lee, you were there. And we, look, we just sat and talked to each other today and talked about how God has blessed this house. I said, Sue, tell me if my memory serves me correctly. Was it $175 we had to believe God for every month? She said, that was the exact amount. <laughs> And I'll tell you, we were more face before God. Uh, I mean, there was much more than Wednesday night prayers. We were there at 6 a.m. in the morning to try to get that, to, for God to move. And he did. He did. Well, would be to God, I had only $175 to give out today. Wouldn't that be something? We'd all be millionaires. I'm, I'm trying to get something across, if you'll bear with me. God is... No respecter of persons. If we will do what's right with God, he will never disappoint us. But I'm telling you before God, you better know how to control your thoughts. And I'm going to show you this in a minute. You need to control what goes into your mind because what goes into your mind will come out of your mouth and determine your destiny. So those people that in right standing with God will be exalted in honor. And one more scripture. The wicked will see it. I believe this. I believe there'll be a generation of Christians, and I believe it's already begun, where the wicked man will see it and be grieved and angered. He will gnash his teeth and disappear in despair. The desire of the wicked shall perish and come to nothing. Because the church is supposed to be the head and not the tail. The church is supposed to be above and not beneath. The church is supposed to be living in prosperity, which means spirit, soul, and body. The church is not supposed to be sick. The church is not supposed to be deprived. The church is not supposed to have lack of sleep and be in depression and be in oppression. That is not God's church. Hallelujah. Well, pastor, under the circumstances, what are you doing under them? You're above and not beneath. And don't misunderstand me. I've had my moments like everyone else in here when fear gripped my heart. Not about just my life, 
but the life of the church, the life of my family, fear. But I've learned something over the years. The longer you're in God and the more you stay in that word, it truly is false evidence appearing real. You've got to train your mind. You've got to train your thoughts. Because believe me, they're like daggers that come at you. And when you're tired and you're weary in the battle, it's easy to start speaking negative. It's easy to listen to these thoughts. Oh, you poor thing, you. You just need to go, you just need to stay in bed. Why do you get up that early? Just stay in your bed. Feel so, you really need to have a few days of just feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah, you can, oh, don't even listen to, just, just relax. No, 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 no. And before you know it, you're in this place of a nice big cake in front of you. You've been on a diet, but here's the cake, and it's covered with candles, and you're blowing out your pity party candles. And then you wake up and you see you've slept in for two hours, and instead of jumping out of bed, you say, I'll just shut the alarm off and I'll just stay in bed today. Well, what good did that do you at the end of the day? You might have lost a pound because you didn't eat anything, but what good did that do you? Because the next day, the problem's still going to be there. It doesn't change. Excuse me. It doesn't change. The problem's still there. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. When you're, these thoughts come at you, you take your authority. Take your authority. I just read to you in Psalms 112.4, when darkness overcomes the godly, when darkness overcomes the godly, light will come bursting in. I shared this last week, the NLT translation. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch your thoughts. Watch them. Keep your attitude good. If you've been going through a difficult time, and many of us have, get ready. Prepare yourself for the goodness of God to come to you in a new way. Know that his light is about to come bursting in. Get ready for breakthrough. Get ready for promotion. Get ready for restoration. You may have had that problem for a long time. Now, I just heard something from the Holy Spirit. There's two people in here today. And you've been bothered for a long time with chronic depression. You go in and out of it. Kind of like a, a, it's like a cycle. And the Lord says, if you will hear my word today, you'll be delivered from that and it will never come near you again. Depression's a spirit. (laughs) Hallelujah. So today is the day that everything can turn around for you. Suddenly, things can change. God wants his glory to be seen on you. He wants you to stand out in the crowd. He wants you to be so blessed that everyone around you can see his goodness on you. So keep standing, beloved. Keep believing, keep hoping, and keep declaring his word because his light is going to come bursting through. How How do you control your thoughts? Study God's thoughts. His word and your life will change forever. Now, could I say something to you today? Don't beat yourself up. Stop it. I do a lot of counseling, not a lot of counseling, not nearly as much as I used to, but I talk to a lot of people every day. Might not be sitting for an hour's counseling, but I do it my own way, but I hear this all the time. Don't beat yourself up. When you don't always succeed, don't beat yourself up, beloved. Because the work of the kingdom is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. When you don't give up, you've always got a chance. If you don't give up, God will come through. Mark 4.28 says, first the blade, then the head, then the full grain in the head. Which direction are we traveling today? The growth of the word of God in our hearts is progressive. 
It happens every day, day by day, each moment by moment. No one becomes a spiritual giant overnight. It never happens. And if they do catch this quickly, it usually, it's like a, a, a falling star. It goes up fast and pss, peters right out. You need to have the seed sown in good ground. And you need to know the Word of God. And how you do that is just meditate there in day and night. Even if it's only one paragraph, only one sentence, until you get it. Instantaneous growth, I can tell you from the ministry of experience for the last 40 years, is rare. Very, very rare. I've watched them be in fire. Oh, bless God. I'm here, I'm here. I'll be here every time the doors open. Oh, I'll look around. Where are you? Because it wasn't in the good soil. It was in the shallow that just blew away with the wind. You know, that's why the Bible tells us some are tossed around and thrown around with every what? Wind of doctrine. Because the seed never got a chance to germinate. Are you hearing me? So instantaneous growth is rare and almost always ends in de destruction. Almost always. Progress is the key, beloved. God looks for movement forward. Keep your thoughts on him. He's looking for movement forward. So I asked you before in a couple of moments ago, which direction are we traveling in today? Which way are we going? Are we moving closer to be conformed into his image? Or have you been taking steps away from his lordship in your life? Maybe you're feeling today that it's been too long for you since you spent time with God. Well, if it is, beloved, make today the first in a habit of seeking his perfect will for your life. Don't wait till tomorrow. You might not be here. I've been called by God to make it plain. I might not be here. And if you're waiting for a deathbed repentance, you might never get it. Your life can be snuffed out like that. I'm not a gloom and doom preacher. I'm telling you the truth. It's life. We don't pray for that. We don't believe for that. We plead the blood. We do all the right things. But if and when that time comes, never mind if, when the time comes that your spirit leaves your body, will you stand before God? Will he say to you, beloved, well done, thou good and what? Faithful servant. Enter into what? The rest of the Lord. Why would you enter into a rest? Because you're supposed to be really busy in the sense your, your call in this earth is to win the lost at any cost. Your call is to get involved in your local church. Your call is to see the lost and go, talk about Jesus. Your call is to let your light shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father. All of these things together, when we get to heaven, we're going to need a rest. At least that's how I see it. Are you hearing me? And so, oh, well, I don't know what I'm called to do. Do something. And the Lord will show you. I mean, just roll up your sleeves and do something. Don't tell me you don't know how to pull weeds. Are you hearing my heart today? I'm saying these things for you. For you. God supplies every need I have. Everything we need is in this house, beloved. I say these things for you because I love you enough to tell you. Life is short and we need to be prepared whether to stand before God at our own passing or to see him come back in the rapture. We have to be prepared. We can't be like those foolish virgins that did not fill their lamps with oil. So the times that we're living in and the things that we're seeing, and literally, I mean, it's starting. It's starting in America. It's already all through the world. And that is the 
people coming against Christianity. We are being persecuted. There are Christians dying right now for their faith. I'm saying all that to say this. When you get a hold of what I'm saying today, it will all begin in your thought life. Every one of you, as you're seated here and I'm talking and I'm under the anointing, your thoughts are going all over the place. Receive those good thoughts from the Lord. He wants to bless you. He wants you to be in his presence someday, and he wants to just hold you in his arms and say, oh, son, oh, daughter, I was so proud of you down there. That's why we have such a great cloud of witnesses watching us. All those who have gone before us, all those who have received their rewards, they're shouting us on. They're saying, go for it. Give it all you've got. Isn't that right, Aaron? Isn't that what Pastor Dave used to say to you all the time? Give it all you've got, right? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Give it all you've got. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. So get into a habit of seeking his perfect will for your life, beloved. And be faithful to finish. Go all the way with God and guard your thoughts. I'll touch this next week, but Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and men. But there's something you need to do today, and that is when you, this happens to you, when the thoughts come to you and you're not sure, you know, what do you do? Don't do anything in a hurry. I'm going to talk to you about practicing the pause. Everyone say pause. Listen, practice the pause. When in doubt, pause. When angry, oh, you're good, okay. When tired, when stressed, and when you pause, pray. Take that moment to pause and filter that thought. And when you filter that thought, see if it lines up with the word of Almighty God. Listen to me. Philippians 4, it says, if anything is excellent, if anything is praiseworthy, think about such things. The NIV. Change how you think and keep going. You and I do not have any more problems than other people. We just think about them more often. We think about the problems instead of the promise. We think about the enemy instead of our God. What is the enemy doing to you? The enemy has no power over you. There's the power of suggestion that says great is weapon. He can suggest all these things to you. And suggestion starts in the mind. And if you receive it in your mind, it goes into your spirit. And if it's in your spirit and it comes out of your mouth, it becomes your life. You are today what you thought and said you would be yesterday. It's just that simple. It truly is. So you just think about it more often. It's what you think that produces how you feel. A lot of people don't understand that. Listen carefully. It's what you think that produces how you feel. That's why the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. Because if you lose hope, your whole body can go down. It's, it's a known fact. So if you don't believe what I'm saying, try getting angry without first having angry thoughts. Are you here? Try getting sad without first having sad thoughts. You can't do it. To experience a feeling, you must have the thought that produces it. I'm gonna say that again. To experience a feeling, you must have already received the thought that produced it. If that thought came to you, oh, today's gonna to be one of those days. And you receive that, you're going to have one of those days. Aren't you afraid to go to that doctor? Are you afraid of what, aren't you afraid of what he's going to say? You weren't afraid at all till that thought came to you. 
And then you think, oh, what is he going to say to me? Oh, and then you lose a week's sleep for nothing. Hopefully, you hear me. Oh, glory to God. So what can we do? Change how we think, and we'll change how we feel. Nothing will hold your negative feelings in place other than your own thinking. I call it stinking thinking. If it doesn't line up with the word, get it out of there. You can't do this overnight. Practice makes perfect. Every time that thought comes to you, just say no, no. No, I replace that thought with, you know, the thought can come, oh, you can't do anything right. You never do nothing right. No, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Oh, do you know how sick you are? No, by his stripes I was healed. And I could go on and on and on. That bill will never get paid. You're believing for something that's never going to happen. Oh, yes, it is. My God will supply every need I have according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And just pick your scriptures. Choose your scriptures. Write them down. Put them on your bathroom mirror. Do whatever you have to do with them. Get the word inside of you. So we change how we think when we, we change how we feel rather when we change how we think. Oh, hallelujah. The next time you're feeling upset or worried or depressed or whatever, notice your thinking. I guarantee you it'll always be negative. Now listen, and if you're taking notes, this is what you need to write down. This is life changing. Fear motivates evil to you, and strife opens the door for it to come in. Faith motivates good to you, and love opens the door for it to come in. If you just get that today, you've got something that will change your life. Are you hearing me today? Glory to God. So speak to yourself as I wrap this up. Speak to yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. If it was good enough for King David, it's good enough for us. I'm going to say this to you, beloved, from the bottom of my heart. I haven't arrived, but I'm on my way. This is what I have learned. This is what I have learned. If you don't adapt and adjust, you will become extinct. I've learned at my time of life, I have to adjust and I have to adapt to new things. And it's not easy, but it's what God is speaking. It's a new day. Behold, behold, Isaiah said, it's a new day. Do you not understand it? Do you not comprehend it? Look, look, look. It springs forth before your face. If you don't adapt and adjust, you'll become extinct. Keep moving forward and watch your thought life. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Then I'm done. I'm done. Praise God. God is good. Would you bow your head with me, beloved? Thank you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you came here today and... You do not know Jesus. You do not know that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you've heard it for the first time today. I want you to be blessed the rest of this day. I want you to know Jesus. I want you to come alive in his presence. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I just want us all to pray together this morning if we could. Could we say this together? Heavenly Father, I love you. I love you with all of my heart. And I ask you today to let that word that I heard penetrate my very being. Today, I want to have a new life. I want to guard my thoughts. I want to apply the Word of God. 
I want to live a good life. I want your blessing upon my life. I want your blessing upon my decisions. And especially, I want your blessing upon my entire household. And today, Father, I have heard your word. And now help me to help you to help me to apply it to my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. And if you're here today, this morning, and you have never received Jesus, I never want to close the service without giving you the invitation to come to Jesus, the greatest miracle of your life. And you may have known the Lord. You may know the Lord right now, but you know you need a deeper walk. You know there are things that you heard in this message today that you need to get right. This is not condemnation. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. This is simply you saying to the Lord, Lord, today I'm going to make some big adjustments. Can I see your hand? Everybody close their eyes. Nobody's looking around. Oh, all over the place. God bless you. See your hands all over. Thank you. Thank you for being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Then let's all say this together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the conviction of the Holy Spirit in my life. And today, I'm going to do my best to do what you've asked me to do. And now, Lord, you do the rest. And if you said that from your heart, say amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet if we can. God bless you. I'd love to talk to some of you outside for a few moments and